Hi and welcome back everybody. In this episode we are creating the backend APIs and also a service layer for this NFT marketplace. If you're new on here, hey, I'm Robert and in this YouTube series you learn how to build a full stack NFT marketplace with or without lazy minting. If you have not seen the live demo in the first video yet, then please do so now before continuing with this content. Before we get started, Please click the like and the subscribe button, but also the notification bell below so that you guys can keep up to date with all of our videos because we're gonna drop a lot more soon. So, so you know what? Let's, let's do it. it! Today we start with creating the backend APIs that allows us to retrieve the lazy minute NFTs from the database and then we create the backend APIs that enables us to create the NFTs in the database and the NFT image and the NFT metadata on IPFS. In order to build the backend APIs, we open the pages directory in our NFT marketplace. Within this pages directory, we can see that Next.js has created an API directory for us where all backend APIs are located in Next.js. Within this API directory, we find the hello.js file, which is a sample backend API. Here we copy this default function, which basically just returns a JSON object with the name John Doe. In the API directory, we create a new route simply by creating a new directory. And we name this new route NFTs. Within this NFTs directory, we create a new file index.js. We copy the default function from the hello.js file here into this index.js file. Here we remove the function name handler because actually we don't need it. Instead, we make this function an async function. Now we go back to our components directory where we find the nfts.js component which we created in the second episode and we copy these temporary nft items from here to our new index.js api file here and we return our temporary nft items here now instead of John Doe. Now we can open our browser window and open the route API NFTs. Here we can see that our temporary NFTs are returned as a JSON array. Now we create a new directory named services in the root directory of our project. And we create two files in this directory, the service api.js and the service marketplace.js file. The service marketplace module contains functions that are basically called from the front end. And the service API module contains functions that interact with our backend APIs. Again, you can name these modules any way you like, but I decided to prefix these files with service if they interact with other internal or external services of our marketplace. In the service API module, we write our first function get NFTs, const get NFTs, which is an async function without arguments. And here we fetch our new API route NFTs and return the result. In order to make functions of this module available outside of the module, we export it as follows. Now we can switch to our service marketplace module and import the service API module as follows. 
now we can write a use NFTs function which has an NFT item state variable and a use effect hook which calls the get NFTs function in our service API module. And here we update the NFT item state variable with the NFT items that we received through the service API. Later we will update these NFTs with data from the smart contracts and from lazy minted sales orders, but we cannot do this now since we don't have this data available yet. Now we can switch back to the NFTs component that we created in the second episode and we can delete the NFT items, the temporary NFT items here. Instead, we can call our service marketplace use NFTs function here, which returns us the NFT items object. Now we can open a front end and we see our NFTs here again. But this time they are loaded through our backend APIs and through our service layer. In the service marketplace module, we also locate some other functions like get NFT collections, which returns us the collections of the marketplace or the function is marketplace NFT, which determines if an NFT or NFT collection was created through our marketplace or if it is an NFT that was created somewhere else. Next, we create some more backend APIs. We create a new route, NFT. So basically we create a new directory, NFT, in the API directory. And within this NFT directory, we create a file named create.js. In this file, we will create the backend API functions that create the NFT in the database and the NFT image and the metadata on IPFS. Right now, we can just write the structure of this backend API since we don't have the prerequisites available yet, but we will implement these features in the following videos. Basically, we expect to receive an action here as a query parameter. Based on this action parameter, we will either create an image in IPFS or we will create a metadata of this NFT on IPFS or we will create the NFT in the database. If the NFT is lazy minted, then we recover the address of the token creator from the signed sales order. But if the NFT was created directly on the blockchain, then we take the token creator address directly from the blockchain as well. In order to update an existing NFT, we create a new backend API with an internal uh, ID of the NFT as route. Here we will just allow to update NFTs with valid sales orders. And we determine valid sales order differently depending on if, there are, if the NFTs are minted on the blockchain or not. Once we have created these new backend APIs for creating and updating NFTs, we switch back to our service API module here. And we also create new functions here that call the backend APIs accordingly. The function create image in IPFS we use to upload a file, an image, an NFT image from our front end to a backend API. In this function, we create an empty form and we add the NFT image to it. And here we upload the form to our backend API with the action create image in IPFS. Internally, the upload form function posts our form data to our backend API create and passes the action as a query parameter. 
As a tool to easily create and upload form data, we use Formidable. We install Formidable as follows. Later, we will write a new service for Formidable in order to pass the form data in our backend API. Now, a quick overview of the functions we wrote here. Here we export these new service API functions to make them callable from the front end. Next, we create four more service modules for our service layer. We create a service db.js file, which will contain all functions that interact with our MongoDB database once it is available. We create the service ARP712.js module which will contain functions to create uh, lazy minted sales orders. We create the service formidable.js module, which will enable us to pass the form data in our backend API. And finally, we create the service ipfs.js module, which will create the NFT images and the NFT metadata on IPFS through Infura. We switch back to our service formidable.js file and here we implement a body parser function. This body parser function we will call from our create backend API and we will pass the API request to it. And finally, this function makes the uploaded file available for us in our backend API. Now we switch back to our create backend API and we call our new service formidable.bodyparser function as follows. This makes the form data and the NFT image available in our backend API. If you like this content, please click the like and the subscribe button and also the notification bell below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.